back with another video. We rolling at an epic pace. This is your boy CJ Goodfellow with the Boxing Clinic. Shout out to the LDBC one time for the one time. Pretty much piggybacking off of Paula Malinazzi's uh, crusade to nail Pacquiao for performance enhancing drugs or steroids, whichever one makes you feel comfortable or makes him feel comfortable. Um, basically, you know, Paulie's been, you know, um, the leader of Pacquiao steroid usage, you know, for a long time, even before, or right around the time Floyd Mayweather uh, asked for random drug testing, and his uh, family was saying that, and trainers were saying that Pacquiao was juicing, and the shit was completely unnatural, the way he was moving up in weight classes, and when he got to welterweight, he became um, Floyd Mayweather's peer, and, you know, undoubtedly his biggest rival over the years that he was on steroids and basically that um pretty much Floyd pulled it out his ass and you know didn't want to fight because he was scared of Pacquiao that was the water cooler talk amongst um you know boxing fans and you know celebrities black celebrities and black people as well for the simple fact that Floyd was just scared of many Pacquiao um but uh the more and more people thought about it uh, the more and more people thought that you know Pacquiao really was juicing. In the past, we have had a lot of guys that have been popped for juices. Just recently, um, Romain Severn got popped for something. It was some minor. Uh, Alexander Povetkin got popped for steroids. Lamont Peterson got popped for testosterone booster because he was dealing with a with a um, with a medical thing. That's why he didn't get stripped of his IBF title at Junior Welterweight. Shane Mosley, uh, you know, uh, according to him, didn't know he was getting you know juiced up. So it's possible, you know, in my opinion, I did think Manny Pacquiao was taking something unnatural. Uh, let it be you know, PEDs and steroids. I spoke on it before. And of course, the backlash has been epic. I never spoke on it on this channel live. I used to keep that shit on personal pages. I used to work with another group. And, um, you know, I broke away from that. You know, they doing their thing. Uh, shout out to Colossal Box and Talk. I'm doing my thing. And, you know, I pretty much got total creative control about what I, you know, want to say. And pretty much that's where I wanted to take it, you know. Um, Know, I can handle the backlash, but I don't want the backlash to be upon on other people. So, you know, I just do my own thing, but still love those guys and still collab and talk and work together. Um, definitely a great page, and um, uh, definitely recommend that page as well. Um, pretty much think that page is better than mine. Those guys' knowledge is you know extraordinary, but back to the topic of discussion is the simple fact that um, I do, you know, he jumped up eight weight classes. Um, simple fact of it is early in his weight, uh, early when he came to America. Um, you know, when he got with Freddie Roach, you know, you, you could think that, okay, this guy was uh, under nutrition or malnutrition, whatever you want to say. Over in the Philippines, he didn't have everything he needed, and that's why he was getting knocked out early in his career. He didn't have a proper meal training plan. He didn't have a proper trainer. He didn't have a proper um, assets to be great, you know. And when Freddie Roach um, got some real professional training, um, a guy that was a, a understudy to, uh, to um, legendary trainer Fudge, um, as well, and, um, shit, you know, this guy is, 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 uh, you know, he came up, you know, he was getting eaten right, uh, you know, building his body up right, and at right about 135 pounds, Mark, Paul and Arlisi says, when he fought David Diaz, that's when you've seen the juice become loose, that's when the beast came out, he looked ripped up, and, you know, it's just not me saying that, you know, I'm hating on Pacquiao or nothing like that. I'm definitely not hating on Pacquiao, but, you know, sometimes, you know, it adds up, and I could be wrong. I'm not saying that I have any extra inside knowledge or anything like that, but, you know, I'm talking about Paul Minaji right now, saying that the David Diaz fight when he became a straight monster, um, it seemed as he moved up in weight classes from about 135, 140, 147, around that time to 150, he was just a total animal. It seems like he was, um, you know, he got faster, he got quicker. His body, his body got, you know, more muscular, tighter, cleaner, as far as, you know, the muscle definition. Um, his stamina was unmatched by anybody in the sport. Only guy that came close at the time was Floyd Mayweather. And this dude can go at 100 miles per hour like a wild mongoose from round one to 12. I, 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 at that point in time, I think he can go 20 straight rounds without, you know, giving up anything. Um, and that's what people raised the suspicion. Not only did he knock, when he ran out, thought Ricky Haddon, it's a point that how he did Miguel Cotto, even though he was coming off a, a tough fight with Joshua Clotty. Um, but, you know, Stephen Bredman, uh, Edwards, uh, the trainer of Julian J. Rock, uh, Williams made a great uh, comment on one of my posts that, you know, people tend to forget that Pacquiao, you know, after the Miguel Cotto stretch, he fought guys that had never been knocked out, as far as, you know, such as Antonio Margarito, um, Brandon Rios, 
Marquez, Floyd Mayweather, um, you know, Jeff Horn had never been stopped. You know, all the guys since then, since 2009, had never been stopped before. So, you know, which people are saying that the decline in his um, in his performance is just, you know, a result of him fighting bigger and stronger guys. Um, but that that is a good point. And the simple fact is his body did change. His body went from being very muscular around the time Floyd asked for random drug testing and the time that he said he was scared of needles but had tattoos on his, few tattoos on his body. Then it went to he would take the random drug testing two, you know, up to two weeks before the fight and then people start saying all this stuff about that's when you can get the steroids back in your system and all that. I don't know about all that. But it was all these excuses that Manny Pacquiao was making. Maybe it was a simple fact that Manny Pacquiao... Um, you know, was being ordered by Bob Arum to say that Bob Arum doesn't like making anything but in-house fights. No matter how big the fight was, he didn't, he didn't exhaust the, he exhausted every, um, you know, opponent he could until he fought Floyd Mayweather and juiced Manny Pacquiao all the out. Then he fell on the Floyd Mayweather. He was manipulating the media, manipulating the fans the whole time. And maybe that's the reason why Pacquiao, um, you know, didn't want to fight Floyd Mayweather because he's a promoter. But um, his body drastically changed after that time. You know, people saying he was getting off the juice. His body started to get flat, started to get flimmy. The muscle definition and tone started to leave. And then people started talking about Marquez was on steroids to even the score with Pacquiao. So, you know, uh, outro, man, I, I did think he was taking something knowingly and not knowingly. He's a nice guy. Just my opinion. I'm not trying to piss on the guy, but, you know, the proof's in the pudding.